talked about uh, how much influence Alice Collins had on your on the 2015 team, and your, she had much influence on your career as a whole. You know, that said, news Alex was a, a great player, obviously, but just a wonderful person, um, great character, smile on his face. You guys know who I am, but practiced really hard. He was a great teammate. He makes love him. Um, he, he would work every day. He was super competitive. That's why I love the Robin. He just, you know, the, the bigger the moments the year I was here with him, the, the better he played. Rushed from the 1,600 yards that year um, and just did a, just did a tremendous job um, as a player, but as a, as a person, man, what a great young man. It was fun to be around, fun to coach, and it was just heartbreaking. Um, I had it, you know, I had so much life left to live and just a, just a wonderful, beautiful person. And then, you know, you read um, all the things that his teammates say about him, not just here, but his teammates in the National Football League and stuff as well. So, obviously, prayers to his family and uh, just a just a wonderful human being. You see in the country, but how are you feeling about the guys behind him? Are they progressing along as well? Yeah, they're, they're, we got a good group. You know, um, these guys work really hard. Jacoby and uh, Kate Thornton and Malachi. Um, they, they all they all come to work every day. They got blue collar mentality. Um, you know, this is you know we grind it out, so we meet a lot and everything this time of year. And these guys are you know great note takers and listeners and um, it's it's a really well rounded room. We got some young guys in the room, you know, Riker Aspo's in there with us too, and then we got some elder statesmen um, with with Cade and, um, and and KJ. So it's a really well rounded room. It's a very talented room. Um, but the thing I've been most impressed about is, is the amount of respect they have for one another. These guys are not uh, in any way, um, you know, jealous of one another and and you know and all that. Which it, sometimes in quarterback rooms can be tough because only one guy is going to play and everybody wants to be the guy that goes out there when the game starts. And obviously uh, KJ's really established himself here. And I think it's really good to have him in the room, um, especially for the younger players to watch a guy and be able to mentor the guys. And um, I think it's really important for young players to be able to have uh, someone to look up to and watch and say, okay, that that's how you're supposed to do it. And, uh, and KJ and, and Kate Fortin um, both have certainly uh, played that role very well thus far. Coach, on the topic of that 2015 team, you had Brandon Allen and Alex Collins, 3,000-yard passer, 1,300-yard rusher. What similarities do you see between them and, you know, the backfield today with KJ and Rocket? Uh, very similar. Um, I think uh, KJ's a, a great player. He's uh, obviously a, a, a big athlete that can really run, but he's got really, really good arm talent. He's a really good passer. I mean, and when I say that, I mean – that he can he can pass the ball. He's not a thrower. He can he has great touch. He can change the trajectory of the ball. I've been very impressed with his ability to anticipate and throw to throw to guys before they're open and make them open. And his ball placement is uh, has really really been you know really good this camp. Um, you can tell he's really worked hard in the off season. So I think KJ has um, the ability to be as, as good as, he, as as anybody I've ever coached, and I've, I've coached some good ones. Um, and the same thing with Rocket. I mean, this guy, man, he, you know, you would think that he's a freshman that just got here. I, and when I say that, his attitude and his demeanor and the way he practices, he does not practice like a guy that um, rushed for 1,500 yards last year and has all these accolades. He rushed like ru he runs the ball and practices like a guy that's very hungry that has something to prove. And, you know, a, a, a coach told me a long time ago is that when your best players are your hardest workers, it sets the tone for your your entire team, and we certainly have that uh, with KJ and Rocket, they and, and Bo, and, and, and a lot of these guys can work extremely hard. But these two guys are as talented as anyone I've ever been around, and um, they're certain they're fun to coach because they want to be coached and, and they practice very hard. A scheme from 2015 to bring it to this year's team. You know, there, yeah, I mean, um, there's certain plays that I always say stand the test of time. So there's there's plays that. You know, I've been running since uh, I was a player um, and and things like that. So I think, you know, we always adjust and adapt and everything. But there's like I said, there's certain plays, whether it be run schemes or protections or, or route combinations that, you know, you look back and you continue to run them every year because uh, they're good and they have good answers versus different structure. And um, they give your guys uh, opportunities to be successful.
for you is what's it like being back in Fayetteville with Sam Pittman as now the head coach and, you know, just being back here, what does that mean to you? Oh, it's, um, it was a really easy, uh, transition. You know, it was a really easy yes too when coach called me because of uh, how fond um, I am of this area. And my family was of this area, uh, living here for three years before, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's got yeah, wonderful fans, wonderful people, um, great support. It's, it's, it's a very unique place. It's unlike any other place I've ever been. And uh, so it was really easy. And then to be back with coach, I've always had a tremendous amount of respect for coach. He, uh, um, as an assistant coach, he uh, was a, a tremendous uh, technician. He had uh, tremendous relationships with his players and it, he was uh, extremely, extremely hardworking and recruiting. So when I saw um, the news um, a few years ago that Arkansas hired Coach Pittman, it did not surprise me one bit that, A, that he was a head coach because of uh, his ability to teach and communicate and recruit and work uh, and lead. And then, obviously, I knew of the, um, how fond he was when he was here of this place. And so I thought, what a great hire immediately uh, when I saw the news. And certainly, Coach has done a, a great job and continues uh, to build a great culture here. And uh, um, I think him, him and the staff, because I haven't recruited anybody here, they've done a tremendous job of recruiting this football team as well. Coach, taking you back to those times, 15, 16, 17, players that were around that era uh, when you were announced as the hire, one of the topics that they were bringing up like on Twitter and stuff was um, the trash talking between you and Ryan Pulley huh. back in the day. Is that a, a you and Ryan Pulley thing or is there somebody else you identify? No, it was just a Ryan Pulley thing. He started it. So, um, you know, man can only take so much, but uh, I, I think I never talk across the ball, to be honest with you. I never have, unless it's a compliment. Like I'll tell guys, hey, man's a great player because, you know, iron sharpens iron and we're all trying to be good. But I think, I think, uh, Ryan probably was trying to get under my skin a few times and probably called me on a bad day. So, but then we made it into a fun thing. So it was good. Yeah. The guys, I think seem, seem to enjoy it. Have you wrapped up install? And if so, is how is KJ feeling in the offense? Is it second nature to him yet? Still got some hints. No, on. he's, uh, he's really progressing. I, I, I like where he's at. Um, I really like where he's at uh, from a, a run game standpoint and a protection standpoint. Um, he's, He's doing a really good job, I think, of understanding um, our run our run game and when things are not going to be good or on the, on the flip side of that, understanding, well, this might be a really be a better play based off the structure over here, and he's, and he's doing that at the line of scrimmage. And then also his ability to help us in our some of our five- and six-man protections, uh, getting on the, on the correct blitzers. He's, he's grown a lot in those areas, really come a long way. I feel really, really good about him. He, He's a really smart, smart young man, um, and he's very – he's got great instincts. And, uh, you know, early in the spring, he would say, Coach, I was thinking about – and I was thinking about – so I, 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 I've talked to him and I said, listen, you're smart. You have great instincts. Trust him. You got something you think is right, you're probably going to be right, so just do it. And I said, if you're wrong, we're going to fix it later. So – and I think he's really kind of taken to that, and uh, he's being more decisive with some of those decisions. And, uh, man, what a what a really, really smart player. I mean – He's obviously talented, as you, as everybody in here knows. But I mean, he's he's off the charts as far as an intellectual standpoint, as far as understanding football, and uh, and and he's every day. I think he's growing, and I and I I really do. I think he's got a whole. I think he's got a ceiling. I, I don't think he's even come close to reaching it yet either. So I'm very excited for him this year, and then in the into the future. Finishing up on that, where were you with install? Did you get it done early this week? And what's the kind of the yeah. Focal point heading on. We're 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 now going into uh, kind of like uh, miscellaneous things, if you will, um, things that uh, wrinkles from different things that we want to do um, during camp. Things always come up as well. Like you start doing something well, and you go, "Ooh, you know, we might be able to do this off of that." You know, have complementary plays to your to your best plays, and so we're we're we're, we're still doing that a little bit. But the majority of the install is all is all through. Uh, we got the foundation in of what we're going to do from a run game protection and pass game standpoint. Feel really good about it. Um, and now we've been I, what, what we've been doing with the scripts is challenging them. Now, all right, here's here's we got it all in, but now we're changing it. We're doing it today out of this personnel grouping. We're going to do it today out of this formation. We're going to do it th today out of this motion or whatever that is. And so we're trying to continue to, to apply pressure, but in a different way, if you will. On the scrimmage, there was a lot of pressure on the quarterbacks. And then we had the old lineman in here talking about there's so many protections, still trying to iron those out. What was your take on 
the scrimmage uh, analysis. Yeah, I, w- I would agree with that, you know, and I, I think that's it's really not any different than any other scrimmage I've been in. You know, it, um, these scrimmage situations are, are different because it's not a game. It, you know, you're trying to create uh, different situational football in them. And they, they, in my experience, they tend to be very pass heavy because you play, you do a whole series of second and 10 play third, and you do a whole series of two minute, you do a whole series of this. And and so anyway, um, I, I don't think that's unusual that you have protection issues and scrimmages in fall camp. Um, um, and, but I, I do, I know this one, one thing we do is we don't like, um, get conservative we keep going because we got to get better and we got to practice and i think the other thing is is i think we have a very very talented defense um in particular in the front seven as far as rushing the passer and so we want to challenge our guys man and uh this is the best way to figure out what what we can do and what we can't do and um it's the best way for our players to to gain confidence too because they're they're blocking really really good players Dan, when KJ's in the pocket, it looks like his feet are moving a lot more than they have in the in the past. How much of an emphasis was that when you came in? Total. I mean, I mean, you know, that's just what I believe in as a quarterback. You know, you you never, you know, it's like writing in cursive, man. You're always moving a little bit, and and your back foot helps you, um, helps you with with your clock. You know, we build our back foot in with our clock on when to when to transition when we hitch we forward, we hitch hitch go, we hitch hitch go and throw, um, and and everything like that. So. I think that um, your footwork is, is tied into your accuracy, which is tied into your balance, which is tied into your eyes. And, and it's so important at this position that your eyes and feet are, are doing the right things. And I'm really, really big on training the feet. And uh, we, we do a lot of different things with their feet because they have to play instinctively with their feet. They're not in the game thinking about what their feet should be doing. They're either doing it or they're not doing it. And if they're not doing it, that's my fault because I haven't put them in those positions enough to make it natural, to make it habit forming. So, um, we, we spent a lot of time uh, working on fundamentals and stuff. And I know um, this summer uh, we gave those guys a, uh, a checklist of things to do during the summer on their own. And you, and I could tell as soon as we came back that they had done that. And KJ in particular, man, his pocket posture is very, very good. His eyes are good. Um, and, and like I said, he's, I, I haven't even, you know, we, we blow it dead and we don't let him do some, probably some of the best things that he's probably going to be able to do. And that's create plays on his own. Um, and, and, and do some of those things. So I think his ability to slightly move in the pocket and, and, and get him in the right areas is also going to help help his ability to take off and go or take off and find somebody down the field as well and kind of have an off-schedule play. And the improved footwork, how much do you think that helps him as a NFL prospect down the road? And then I wonder, his completion percentages have actually been better on downfield passes than they've been on shorter passes. Do you see him passing better in, in short yeah, he's been he's been really good on intermediate and short throws. I haven't noticed uh, any anything with that. Uh, I I agree. I, I think his deep ball accuracy is is very good and continues to be very good. I mean, he's made some throws in the last couple of days with really uh, great coverage by our secondary, and he's put the ball in in a, in a place where our receivers can make plays. And um, I've been very impressed with that. And uh, you know. I don't know about the NFL as far as, as that because I think everybody has their own philosophies and how they want to do things. But, you know, I believe in training underneath center. Um, I, I believe in the off season that they should train under center uh, a lot because I, I think when you're under center, it makes you more aware of your, your timing, your rhythm, and your balance on your drops. And I think a lot of these young players now don't play under center ever when they're young. And I, and I, I do I think that that's a disservice for these quarterbacks coming up. Um, because I feel like that's when you really, really learn and build a foundation of balance, rhythm, and timing on, on passes. And it, and then you should transition back into the shotgun um, because that's great as well. But I think it's much easier to transition back than it is to transition forward. And and I think it, it helps helps them develop as a passer um, when, when they train under there. So we do a lot of a lot of training in the offseason under there for those for those reasons. And um uh, I train them in practice that way too. And we are under center some as well, because there's some things that fit what we do under center better than they do in the gun. But we're obviously very multiple as far as we're going to be in the pistol. We're going to be in um, the sidecar. We're going to be under center and um, we're going to have the ability to do all those things. Coach, I think there's been a lot of talk about, you know, KJ, the entire offense, just kind of adjusting to your philosophy based off what the, you know, the offense was last year. But I'm curious, you haven't had really a, a quarterback that's an athlete like KJ in a while, are you, you know, what kind of adjustments are you making to kind of maximize him and uh, how does that work? Um, I I think uh, 
everybody I've coached is different, you know. Um, like I told the I told the quarterbacks uh, the first night, you know, I we go through my quarterback um, commandments and our philosophy of playing the position, and I said, you know, one thing about this position is, you know, I think I had six or seven guys that I coached in the NFL last year, and I said, you know what, they're all different, and they've all taught me something. They've all, you know, when I was young, maybe I tried to put guys in a box a little bit or whatever, but you know, they're all different. Um, you know, Cooper Rush and Brandon Allen are different from Jalen Hurts and Mac Jones and Tua. And, um, you know, it's just I've learned from them. So some guys are better at this and a little better at that. My job is to try to make them equally as good as everything as, as I can. Um, find out where their deficiencies are and try to make them their strengths. That's my job yeah, to figure that out. But then at the end of the day, uh, we're going to grow and we're going to be like, okay, here's what we do well. Here's what we do the best. And, and uh, we're going to do those things. So um, I think KJ is, is a, is a guy that can do a lot of different things. I think he could be a, I think he could be a true drop back passer and get by and do be very, very good at it. He's like I said, he's got great eyes, anticipation, great arm talent, but man, this guy is a big, really, really good natural runner as an, as a natural runner. He's got great vision. He sets up blocks. I mean, um, he's he's a tremendous athlete. I think we're going to find a, a, a nice, um, good balance between uh, letting him do the things he can do with his arm and then I'll, I'll also I'll obviously allowing him to do the things with his legs And at the end of the day to make us uh, the most efficient offense we can be to help our football team win. And so um, he's, he's a really good athlete. And he's, again, I'm, I, I've got, I'm getting to know him. I've gotten to know, know him. And um, and he's different. He's different than the other guys. Just like jo Jacoby Criswell is different than anyone I've ever coached as well. And you can go right down the list. And like I said, I, I just I, I enjoy so much being around them and learning them and and listening to them how they how they learn things, how they visualize things. Um, but at the end of the day, um, they're all different. Some are short. Some are tall. Some can run. Some can't. You know. But there's some also some common characteristics all the great ones have. Okay. And the first one is they got uh, mental toughness. Okay, they got physical toughness, and uh, KJ has that. And the next thing that they have, the guys I've been around, I have great humility about themselves, and they understand that it takes more than just them to be successful, and they put the team before themselves. KJ has that as well. And then the other thing that they've all had, um, all those guys have had, is a tremendous amount of uh, competitiveness to them. They've almost a chip on their shoulder, if you will, like they got something to prove. And uh, KJ has that as well. And then the last thing is is just tremendous functional intelligence, the ability to take things from the from the classroom and then functionally have that translate to the field. And KJ has that as well. So, um, like I said, they're different in a lot of ways, but there's a lot of common things that they have in, in, com in com common as well. And and uh, man, this, this guy's a he's a unique player and a unique person. And he's like I said, I've I've, I've already learned a bunch from him. Can you can you expand just real quick on the the quarterback commandments? How long have you had those? Uh, how many uh, did you just go through some of them? Uh, well, you know, some we've gotten them from from different people, but you know, um, never make a premeditated decision. That's that's one. You know, um, never throw the ball late over the middle. You know, that's one. Never make a blind throw. And then uh, my last one is uh, never throw and hope. Okay, you never throw and go, man. I hope that works out. That's a bad. That's a bad deal. So. We say be aggressive, not careless, and so those are those are kind of kind of things we talk about um, quite a bit in that room. And I want to ask you about the guys KJ's throwing to. Um, just what's your opinion of Tesla and Armstrong, and how confident are you that they can maybe go to guys? Very very confident. They've uh, they've had tremendous camps. Um, uh, Andrew and, and Tesla, both those guys, I I think I saw them really take off the last week of spring ball. And uh, they've continued right where they left off in the spring. They've both been uh, very, very good this camp. Uh, have a tremendous amount of trust in them. They're both have uh, have great size and athleticism, and they both are very competitive. And they both can catch the ball. So we have a tremendous amount of confidence in those guys. I think Tyrone is a guy that missed a lot of spring, but uh, I think he's had a really good camp as well, and he's starting to. Um, starting to step out a little bit as well. Uh, Jaden Wilson as well. Isaiah Satania as well. Um, we, Like I said, we, we've got, I'm, I know I'm missing a, a couple, but we we feel like we've got six, seven, and then we got the two freshmen that, that are playing at a, at a very good level right now. We we feel good about that room. 
I think it's a everybody's really disappointed about Sam, Sam's injury. Uh, again, he he was playing very well, and you know, he's a really big, strong, athletic guy that uh, can run and is competitive. And we're we're really going to miss him, man. He he's he kind of brought an edge to practice every day too, the way he practices and goes full speed. And he certainly will be back um, better than ever when he gets when he gets through with this. Knowing him, um, the way I've gotten to know him, he's going to have the right mindset and attack that injury and be back um, better than ever. But I, I feel really good about that room. And then I think if you throw the tight ends in there now, those guys are going to be able to make plays. Um, Luke, really, really good. You know, Francis, um, Ty, uh, Barquise, you know, that, that room has um, changed since uh, they've gotten a little, little bit of time to get older and bigger. And then a couple of them just got here um, this summer. And they've really, really uh, meshed in and, and are mixing in very, very well with, with, with the group. You know, we got playmakers, I think, at running back, tight end, and wide receiver. And I think we got a, a, a very obviously good playmaker at quarterback. So, Coach, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about Luke. Just, you know, as a freshman, doesn't really look like it at tight end. Do you in, anticipate him having a big year as a freshman? Yeah, I, I don't even – man, I, I'm, you say he's a freshman, I go, oh, oh yeah, that's right. You know, if you – Cause he's been here as long as I've been here. You know what I mean? So I, I, I always think, well, he, he's, was he in his third year? No, he hasn't even played yet. Coach. Oh, okay. Um, but he doesn't look like they play super fast. He's, he can run now. I mean, this guy can run and he plays a million miles an hour at practice. Um, he's super tough. Okay. He wasn't, he was a little, uh, uh light, you know, light in the pencil a little bit, if you will, when he first got here, but he's putting on some weight, he's tougher than nails. Um, he really he really fights you when he tries to block you, and, and he's, now he's gotten his strength levels up and his weight up. So I think he's going to be able to to be a good good guy in the C area and block and block um, the run game the way we think he can. And then in the pass game, he's a total mismatch player. He's uh, it's like having another wide receiver out there to be honest with you. And the guy's got a really good feel for running routes. And again, another guy, kind of like uh, Tesla and, and and Andrew, that has really good size. And when the ball goes up, he attacks the football. With Jacoby, or, I mean, if, if something was to happen with KJ, are you confident that he can step in and win you guys the game? Yeah, we feel really good about Jacoby. I think he's had, um, you know, really good camp. He had a really good spring. Um, he's got tremendous arm talent, like elite arm talent. Um, he can make throws in the windows. I mean, he threw a post the other day, like 60-some yards in the air in, into a breeze. and um, So he, he, he can make some of those wild throws. Um, that a lot of guys can't make, but then when you when you throw on top of it that he can run, he's, he ran 21 plus miles an hour this summer, I believe. Um, he he he's a he's a guy that can do them both, you know. And uh, again, he's he's a little bit different too. He's really smart, um, studies the game, and uh, yeah, we have a lot of confidence in Jacoby, and I think he's just going to continue to get better. KJ has the second and third highest season efficiency ratings in program history. You know who's number one? No. And now in 2016, <laughs> 166.5. I was curious, though, is that do you have goals like that for KJ? Do you have like a list like we want this completion percentage or any of that kind of stuff? No, I, I you know, I, I, I've never really done that. Um, we just, we kind of say we got to do whatever we need to do to make help the team win, to be quite honest with you. And I always tell the guys that if we do what we're supposed to do to help our team win, all that stuff's going to take care of itself. So, no, I, I, I never really have. It doesn't surprise me, though, because KJ, like I said, is a really, really smart player. Um, and like Brandon, Brandon was an extremely smart player as well. And those guys um, both make really good decisions. Um, they both know how to take care of the football, and they're, they're both really accurate. Um, and, again, they're different, you know, um, but both very, very productive players. Real quick, just uh... – How's the open offensive line coming together? Good. We feel really good about them. Um, um, I think, which you know, they play. They're playing a lot together now. I think um, they're, they're, the cohesiveness of the group is is getting better. The communication's getting better. Um, but but overall, I think we feel really good about those five, and I think we're starting to really feel good about the next five um, playing together and coming together. And and like like I said, we go out there every day, man, and we don't. It's 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 a battle. I mean, we don't we practice hard. I've been in a lot of places, and you know, we pl practice physical, practice hard, and we're practicing against really good people, and so that's going to help them grow. And we're also 
we're practicing against very good scheme. It's very multiple. So it it's going to challenge your rules, which I love about fall camp. I love going out there and having our run game and our protections and our routes challenged by, by different things schematically from a defense because it, it makes us – you know, it challenges our, our rules and we have to learn to play rule football. Again, we're going to go into a game, have a really good idea what teams are going to do, but there's also going to be moments in the game where things are going to come up that maybe you haven't shown your 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 players during the week. And if you've got a good sound rules to what you're doing, you should be okay. And that's one thing that uh, has been really good about our camp and for our offensive line is to uh, to fight through those things this these last couple of weeks.